Hello everybody and welcome to the video tutorial to go along with the lockdown training program. The four week training program to help level up your defense. If you haven't seen the previous training program, it is called Grounded. Check it out. You can either watch the video or you can download the ebook. We even have an Excel spreadsheet that you can tick off the challenges daily. Thank you to Rob for doing that. And of course, being a legend that he is, he's also done the same for this program. So if you're struggling to keep track, we have an Excel spreadsheet that you can just tick off each day and and you're sorted. Again, I'd recommend you downloading the PDF. If not, still come over to the Discord. We're super close to getting a partnered on Discord. I don't know what that means, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and it might just legitimize the server. So if you come along, uh, please do uh, say hello and, and stick around for a bit. Anyway, we are going into day one. It is five day a week program. And the cool thing about this program, it takes a maximum of 25 minutes a day. Most days are 24 minutes. And it is going to teach you not only the mechanics, but the fundamentals. And I'm going to try and explain the reasons why we're doing each thing here as best as I can. If you haven't already seen, me and Raid have been doing a No Mechanics series to, well, we got to Grand Champ 3, Div 3, I believe, at our peak, playing pretty much all of our offense is double jump pops and low 50s. But what made the difference was our defensive ability. And by playing defensive and waiting for their over commits, we were able to get to a, what I would consider quite a high rank in the game compared to the average. If you then added offense to this via a program like Grounded or soon to be released Beyond Grounded, the aerial training program, you'll have a massive repertoire of weapons. But don't forget, again, I have done a full masterclass course of all the skills you need to get up to Grand Champ and beyond actually with my belt system. So guys, check out the belt system. You can unlock the belts in the Discord. Once you complete all the belts, you should definitely be ranking up and you get an e-certificate. I'm still doing that. That's still active. I've never not done that. It is completely free as all of these programs are. They are completely free. Let's get into day one then, which is the backboard day. Uh, a lot of people specifically in the low rank struggling the, uh, on the backboard. And I believe that if you're uh, between platinum, diamond, you know, champ, this sort of rank, people still don't have backboard. If you add in backboard, you're going to be miles ahead of everyone else. And you're thinking, well, there's a reason we don't do backboard because it's too hard. No, it's not. That's nonsense. The reason you don't do backboard is because you don't practice it okay so you don't feel comfortable i could take someone in gold and just force them to do backboard stuff for 10 weeks guess what they're going to be the best backboard defender in all of gold okay and they won't be in gold because they'll be able to stop everything but the point still stands to get your defense up match your defense and your offensive stat if you've got a 90 in offense get a 90 in defense you want to be a complete player we ain't playing positions anymore this ain't season one you don't have a midfielder striker and gibbs in there okay you gotta be the total player so that we can carry ourselves to victory every time so let's get into it all the pack codes will be in the description below and i will also pin the top message in the comments with the packs okay so the first one is backboard backflips and the reason we do this is because it's absolutely a brilliant, brilliant weapon. What can happen is if you're shadowing someone up the corner and they're sort of behind the ball, what they'll usually do is they'll drop down. They'll drop down to be underneath you. It's very interesting that people do that. Not many people stay behind the ball. Well, why don't they stay behind the ball? Well, if you take a 50 in someone's corner, like here, if I was to backflip and someone's right behind the ball, that will pinch on their net and that could end up in a goal. So most players won't be hanging around forcing balls across, which is why I like to use the come to daddy, you know, where you literally just drive round go into the ball and kill the guy and then look for his teammates you know that's what i call the come to daddy that's where we use the backboard backflip and there's levels to this so let's say you're new to the game and you've never done anything like this all i want you to do the first thing i want you to do is make sure we are matching the ball's energy if you watch my live stream where i went to uh, no mechanics to C3 Div 3 on American servers, I was talking about matching the energy of the ball. So all we do, okay, is literally match the energy of the ball. So the ball's coming here, match the energy. This is the first thing before you do anything, just match the energy. Get used to matching the energy, right? So we get up and, and look, guys, what I want you to do over time, you'll get, you'll know where the height of the ball is going to be. So you'll, you'll match the height of the ball before the ball even gets there. Okay, so the ball will come to you. You'll know from the trajectory where the ball is going to end up. And then all I want you to do is drive forward, match the height of the ball. That's all we do, match the height of the ball. Now, the problem is a lot of goal players do this and then they do that, right? They get confused. Now, the longer you leave it, the harder it will be. It's like when you rip off a plaster slowly, it bloody hurts. You gotta, you gotta do it quick. The problem is if we do it too quick, okay, we're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna miss. How many people see this? A lot of time. So we need to be one with the energy of the ball. And once we are one with the energy of the ball, then we can manipulate the energy, okay? So we basically take the energy and then we fight it. And that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to match the energy. I'm matching the energy. And then straight away, as soon as I've matched it, I can fight it. And we have a break. I'm just tapping break. Here, I match the energy, match the energy. And then I fight it. 
Now, what you're going to notice when I'm doing this, this is stage one, this is if you're new to doing this, it's going to bounce away. The reason it bounces away is because I'm not jumping, okay? I'm hitting the lower part of the hitbox on the ball, which lifts it away. So stage one is just that. Just get good at matching the energy and then breaking. Stage two is we match the energy and then we break and then we jump. Now look at the difference. Now we're hitting the middle of the hitbox on the ball. Literally come here, jump. And now we don't set up the center for an angle at the shop. We put the ball in the corner. Again, if you haven't watched the series of me and Raid, I would really recommend you watching it because it, it's all about the philosophy of keeping the ball in the corner. By the way, if you didn't know, if you didn't believe me, the safest place for the ball to be is in your corner, okay? Under your possession. So here, and then we jump. So, stage whatever we're on now, stage three, is to then add a backflip to that. So we're going to jump, and then we're going to backflip. Now, the cool thing about the backflip is even if we mess it up and do it instantly, what we'll do is we'll get our big hitbox that's going to be like that. And that's a very big hitbox. You can see a ball cannot pass through that. We are higher than the ball. Let's have a look at this. Match the energy. And there we go. So now we've kept it to the wall. Match the energy. Backflip. Okay, and you see how it's sticking to the wall. And actually, instead of just before it was dropping, we're actually sometimes able, depending on the timing of it, we're able to get a bit of momentum away. Match the energy. Control the energy. And then the final stage, what we want to do is we want to we want to stay with the ball, don't we? We don't want to end up sideways like this. So we need to half flip. So if you don't know how to half flip, there are guys. I'm not going to teach you how to half flip. There's so many guys on half flipping. So match the energy, half flip, and we're with the ball. Okay. So that's all you got to do for this, and that'll be for the first ten shots on the first time you do this pack. So match the energy. Oh, a bit late there. Doesn't matter. Match the energy, half flip. Down we go. Okay, straight away we're with the ball. Look at the cl how much better that is. So now all of a sudden we've took a position and most people aren't confident. Oh, we're on our offense. Look at that. So we've took a position we're uncomfortable in and we're turning it into offense. Okay, just because we practiced it. The next thing is if you go to shot 11. So we do that for all of these 10 shots and then we get to 11. And what we'll notice is that ball's very fast. So some of you out there might think, well, can you do the backflip method? Well, let's try and see what happens. Blimey, we've got to really go for it, right? Okay, so why can't we do the backflip method? Why can't we do the backflip method here? Even if we do the half flip, why can't we do it? Why is it? Why would it not be best practice? Displacement. Because we're hitting this ball away from such a height, right? We've still got a fall down. It's too late. They've already got the ball. So in this situation, it's too dangerous for us to try and do the backflip method. But really, we want the backflip method when we're no higher than this part here. And this is a very significant part. If you're ever playing defense on the backboard, this is a significant part. You either want to be like sort of around this area coming downwards or moving upwards. Okay, because then we can save stuff. What I see a lot of people doing is they'll literally be here and say, oh, I'm struggling on my backboard defending. You're just a bit too high. That's fine if you're stopping someone hitting the... So say if someone's hitting the backboard, I, I, I can come here. But if they're not, if it's more of a defensive thing, they're putting pressure on the net. You really want to be sort of in line with this area. A little bit further away, but it's hard to do when you're not in ball camp. See, you want to be like here, in line. Like you, So if you drive straight, you're basically rotating the car like that. That's just a, a side tip. So with this, what we've got to do is we've got to take the ball over. We've got so much momentum, we need to take the ball over. It's safer. So all we've got to do is drive behind it, let it come past us because we're saying, and then just jab it across. That's all we got to do, just jab it across, and now we're here. And if in real, you would go up straight away for that. Why? Why would you hit this and go up straight away if we come down here? Why do we have to go up straight away? Because we lose our goal side position. So if someone reads what we're doing here, okay, and we hit that ball away and we come down and we're here. Now imagine if you're an offensive player and you've read that and you take a shot. Well, I can't do it in time, but you can take a shot from there. Well, where were we? We were there. So there's no defense, right? So what you have to do is once you hit that ball and you come down, you have to then go for the next ball inside to outside. That means we win the 50, okay, just to prevent that return fire. Even they hit it, it doesn't matter because it's going to funnel to the corner. And that's what this is all about. So all you then do, stage one, is just drive and tap the ball. Now, what if you get one that's a bit more bobbly? Okay, one that bounces away a bit more. Well, you can side flip away. Okay, or you can come out and go towards. So you can actually come out instead and go towards like that, you know, just to protect it across. Ideally, it, it depends on the game mode because really we'd want to do what we're going to do in a minute on the advanced one. But if this is freeze and you know you've got a teammate who likes to spread out, you might just try and look for a pass across to them. They might be in that position to look for a pass. 
And anyway, so we're going to do that for all of those shots, and then we're going to restart the pack from the beginning. Now, let's say we've seen someone hit this ball down there, and they've already gone to this sort of position here. They're already moving towards the back post. Well, if we do the backflip method, although it will work and we'll keep the ball, they might be able to repressure us, and we don't really want that. We want to be able to take advantage of their aggression. That's what it's all about, taking advantage of people's aggression. So when we're here... We need to drive into the ball. Now, you'll notice when I just do a normal drive, what happens? The ball goes flying and it goes central. So what we need to do is we need to get to the position fast. We need to power slide and then move into it. But there's a problem. Let's try and do that. If I hold down boost to do it fast and I use power slide, let's see what happens when I'm on the wall. Believe it or not, I held power slide the whole time as soon as I hit the wall. And I didn't look like a power slide, did I? And much like on the ground, Speed is very important. So again, don't listen to people who tell you to play faster because they don't know what they're talking about. If you play faster, you become slower because things take a bigger line. Playing faster means playing efficiently, okay? It's efficiency that makes you quick. And it's because you're not wasting movement. Here's the difference. Look at the difference. I'm going to go boost the whole way through this with power slide. Boost in, I'm power sliding. You yeah, can't hit the ball. Now, I'm going to boost into position, I'm going to let go of all of my driving, all of my acceleration, and I'm going to do a power slide turn with the rest of my forward momentum. Okay, let's try that. Wow, look at the difference. And we're off, okay? So, when you hit that wall and you're in that position, let go of everything and just power slide and turn. And look at the efficiency. I'm not up the wall, am I? Because I'm not playing fast, I'm playing efficient. Okay, that's the difference that I've been preaching for the last five years. And people keep on doing everything I'm trying to do here by telling people to play fast. Don't listen to them. Play efficient and that will make you fast, okay? So all you're going to do, boost the position, let go of everything. You can even break like that. Like you can actually break. Oh my God, imagine that killing our forward momentum and it makes it easy. God, don't tell these people. They go crazy. So those are what you want to do for the first 10 shots there. When we get to 11, this is the more advanced version of this. We're now following it. But again, okay, let's say we're playing ones or twos. We want to stay behind the ball. Stay behind the ball. Maybe a little air dribble, right? Stay behind the ball. Always behind the ball. Super close if we can. And we're off, okay? So that's what you want to do. And with the bobbly one, if you want to be a bit more sophisticated, again, tap it, air roll, and stay behind the ball. Stay behind the ball. Okay? Try and always block in that inside position. That's all you got to do. So that's day one. Again, I do apologize for the long-windedness with this, guys, but I want everyone to know exactly what to do. Day numero two, we have the straight over. Now, a lot of players in the lower ranks and in ones and stuff, and when I say lower ranks, to me, I usually look at diamond and below, uh, sort of the mid-table and lower. So, to, to me, the lower ranks, diamond and below, they tend to only have a focus at moving the ball towards the net. So, for example, if this is my opponent's goal, okay, and I've played a ball in the corner. If I'm diamond, I'm likely to just try and turn this ball in, okay? And it's not going to work because obviously the defender is going to see me turn. He's going to smash me and he's going to win the 50 because basically I'm actually lifting the ball by turning into it. So I've lifted the ball, so I've now got enough behind the hitbox. And that's why the way why you challenge on the people's first touch because if you know what they're going to do, always challenge that. What you want to do instead, instead of trying to force it to that goal, take it back take it back and take it straight over if you have to take it back take it straight over now look at the vision we get and we can restart our offense if we want maybe we go now for the lateral dribble fake a hook shot bounce dribble okay it's all off the belt system all off the belt system that's all we got to do but we have to take the ball back to begin with so drill number one is the straight over put yourself here press down on the d-pad let the ball spawn and get up to supersonic and all we're going to do is smack the ball over come down jump grab that boost pretend and then come here and go again over the top. Sometimes you'll hit the ball away. That's fine. As long as it's got an angle. Okay. And then we come here. Kill it from the inside to outside. Grab that boost. Speed the ball up. And up we go again. And that's all you got to do. Sometimes you might want to try and get it. You know, you may want to forego the boost. Maybe you're going to leave the booster trap. He's right behind you. He sees you going over. He's gone for the boost there. He's expecting you to do it. You cut that. And you go straight to the net instead. Okay, so you've tricked him. So this is what I'm saying. This is why we do these things, because then we can manipulate the game. So look, he goes, oh, he's left the boost. Oh, no, I've left the net open. They won't realize it until it's too late. So do that for three minutes one way, 
and then turn and do it over three minutes the other way. Okay, so that's really good. That's great, okay? We know what to do now if we're driving down the wing and we've got someone right on our tail, supersonic, trying to demo us. We'll just take it straight over. But what do we do if we've done that a few times and now this guy's smartly going for this path lane and he sees us going over and he starts to move over here. And we don't really want to play into his hands all the time because he's going to get smart about it. So that's where we go for the backboard stop. So we take the ball again and we see him fading. Okay, you always use the camera. We're going to come up, match the height of the ball. Does that look familiar? And we do that block. Let's look at that again. Okay, we can do it from any angle really, but we get a bit of a curve on it. We go up, match the height of the ball, drift turn. Hey, how are you doing that drift turn, Dave? Because of the way it is, because we're actually up the wall and we're not going super fast, we can hold accelerate as we come here because we're actually working with gravity on this particular example. However, when we're here, we have to let go. Okay, so these are the little intricacies that people don't really know about. You'll get it as you practice this. So we're going to come up, match the height of the ball or just above it. We're going to do our drift turn and we're going to come down with the ball. Okay, that's all we're going to do. So let's just get this drilled. You do three minutes one way. So we hit it. It's going fast. We see they've gone in. We go here and you can reverse if you've gone too high and that's fine because they're there and then boom, we're off. And now maybe we go for a wing hook shot. You know, you've got all your, you've got loads of opportunities. So that's the next one. You don't always get to move the ball down in such a perfect manner, right? We don't always get to do this. Sometimes we've ended up in our opponent's corner. Let's say this is our opponent's corner. We've got the ball here. And we're like, oh my God, I've got to escape because they're looking for something or I can't turn safely. So we go to this position. Now, it's different because the ball, we can still wait for the ball to come to us, but we have a new move because of the way the ball falls. So if you look at the way the ball falls here, it takes a long time. It goes up and down. See how long it takes, right? Well, again, now we've got opportunities. Now let's say we've gone for this and this guy's followed us and he's right here, he's right here. So as soon as that ball rolls down, he's gonna challenge it. We don't want him to challenge it on the way down. This is where we use an undercut. So an undercut's a brilliant move. We took the ball back from his corner. We put it towards, we've grabbed the boost, we turn, He's in, he's right close. We undercut. Didn't even drift turn there. You don't even need to drift turn. Why don't I need to drift turn? Because when you're at a higher point on the wall or, and the gravity's acting upon you, you don't necessarily need to drift turn. For example, if I'm here and I let go, that's all I'm doing here. I let go. Look at this. I let go of accelerate. Look how tight my turn is. Downwards. Okay. Of course, you can come up and drift and go up like that. Just again, dry feed it out. You're going to come here, put it on the wall, up. We match the height of the ball. We come down. I come back up. Boom. And we're off. Okay. Undercutting the ball. Undercutting the ball. Do that for three minutes on each corner. Well, two minutes on each corner. About one and a half minutes on each corner. Okay. Well, all well and good, Dave. But I've done exactly what you said. And I've took the ball here. And then all of a sudden, it's just gone difficult. Okay, no problem. This is where we, uh, let's say we take the ball back and it goes difficult for us. Let's just say we've come here, we've gone to go around and the ball's like, it's just awkward. So there we go. We can practice flying behind the ball. Okay, we can practice flying behind the ball and always be ready for that. Okay, oh, we gotta go. We gotta go because we've left the gap. So always be ready to follow behind the ball. And also just notice, I, I'm gonna put this in and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Look at the little air roll to make sure four wheels land. So look at the air roll already there in the angle of where we're landing. So we land into supersonic. All these little things that people don't cover, I'm teaching you right now. But that's day two. Day three is gonna be the aerial block day. One of the things that really annoys me is the amount of packs that don't teach you real positioning. They get you to do the most obscure position, like you got a half flip into a speed flip into a bloody black back flip. No, where are you gonna be? Most people are pushing forward. They're pushing forward, let's say it's free. They're gonna push forward. now. All you got to do is get a hand in the face. So with this particular ball, we double jump. We literally go up and we're going to touch the ball. Now, what do you notice when I do this? Just go in very basic. What do you notice? Well, you're passing it. You're centering the ball. Exactly. So we need to get it to a corner, this corner or that corner. Now, if this ball was faster, you take the momentum. See how it's coming across to this way. If it was faster and you go for this corner because you can use that momentum to just angle it across. But because this is a slower ball, we can actually fight the momentum, boom, and put it into the corner. So all you do is you don't need any fancy air rolls. You literally just lean and you just turn and then turn. So you turn one way. So I've turned a little bit like that. Once I get once I get high, I turn a little bit like that. And then I'll turn a little bit like that if I need to. I may not even need to. So I go high and then boom. You just be able to, sometimes you can just literally lean away if you're in the right spot. Um, and all of these packs can have different angles. So... 
again like if you're coming from different sides which you would be so here we're just going to do the same thing hand in the face and we're just going to play it to the corner all right and when you do this guys don't be lazy and what i mean is people will do this they'll come in they'll hit this and then they'll just go, yeah that's done look at the no look at the landing we don't want that let's play for real so we go up we make the save or whatever we do okay perfect we're ready to land on our wheels and go forward you must practice this because that's going to make the difference so you go through these shots again we're going to go with the ball this time now what i like to do with a ball like this if we're going with the momentum is i only have air roll left so i use free air roll a lot so i'll literally lean up and i'll do that so i lean up and i use air roll i hold air roll and turn my car sideways so when i'm actually doing it on the thing i'm basically i'm rolling my controller from six so i go six and then once i get to six i hold air roll and i roll it to four so six and i roll it to four and you'll get that position six and roll it to four okay we're gonna come here six to four and we're just gonna push it to the side okay that's all you got to do if you can't do that for whatever reason and you've only got an air roll that's the opposite air roll you're just gonna have to do a full spin okay like that but don't do anything more don't do anything more you know all these extra spins it's just if it's so inefficient it's so inefficient people go no but it helps you turn why would i need to turn more if I'm facing the right direction, yeah, that'll do. I should only need to boost. I shouldn't need any extra inputs. That's all I should need to do. I want to get into the right position as soon as possible. This is where a lot of people are going wrong. Anyway, next one. We'll have these, and then you've got the ones in the middle. Where it's more sort of central. So have a little practice with this. So what I like to do with this one, if it's coming at you, there's two ways you can do it. You can come up like this, but it's very difficult. Okay, you can try and hit it, land on the backboard, and then come off and... It's, it is difficult, okay? What most people find easier, including myself, is to face the play as soon as possible. We literally come up, we air roll to face the play, and that makes it easier. And then as soon as you hit the ball, air roll. As you hit it, so I hear, and then as soon as I get the connection, I air roll. Why? So I can stick to the wall, okay? So just something to keep in mind. That is the hover method, day three, number one. And we're back in free play, and we have got the backboard flight drill, speak of the devil. So we just want to get better of our car control. And it's often underrated, really. So we're going to come here, we're going to jump, and we're going to air roll. Now, I want you to look at something. Again, it's all the little nuances that they don't teach you. Let's, let's try something. So if I come to this square here, right, let's go to the top of this right there on the corner. And I'm going to hold A. You ready? Holding A. And I ended up here. Now, I'm going to get to the same spot about here, right? And I'm going to tap A. You ready? Look at the difference. So this time I end up in front of the line and when I held it, I ended up away from the line. This is displacement. Now, both can work in your favor. If you need to attack a ball, uh, you know, that's coming in, you might want to just hold and then you can get out faster. But if you're close and there's someone coming in, you might just want to tap it and stay sort of like defending this area. And the drill is exactly that. So we're going to come here, sort of above the net, and I want you to tap it and air roll. Air roll to face it. Now, get used to using your individual, your normal air roll so you can make all the little differences. You know, I think when people use the special air rolls, which I'm using now, it gets a bit too complicated to go back and forth and you, you end up doing all this. I mean, it just looks ridiculous. So just use what you need to use. So here, I jump out, I turn, and then literally I'm tapping. Like, where do I want to go? Okay. And when you come back to the wall, do that. Okay, do a little turn. So what we're going to do, tap A, jump out. We float, and then we slightly lean back. See, slightly lean back, and then we turn back into it. Slightly lean back. Okay, we're, we're hovering with goalkeeper, and then back into it. And that is what you want to practice, okay, for six minutes. And then you want to come to various areas of the map, again, just for, for working on practice. We don't want to be straight up here. We want a slight angle in. We're going to jump. We're going to turn. Face the ball. So we want to get used to being able to quickly face the ball. So our, our belly, if you like, the belly of the car underneath of the car faces the ball. That's what I'm trying to say, the belly of the car. So we come here face the ball okay that's great and then we lean back and then boom we face the wall this is just to get used to recovery it's a little thing that doesn't really people don't think about but it's mad it's massive so day four is the last pack it's back post defense and i love this pack this is it this is probably my favorite pack i've ever made and i know you guys have figured dave you haven't even completed it yourself i just rush through stuff guys i rush through stuff but i'm telling you this I'll, I'll make the save and then I'll just skip to the next shot. I don't have time to wait to make sure I saved it, you know? But this is important. Why is this important? Because this is where you should be. <laughs> How many goalkeeping values? We, we could go get one, you know? But they start you in stupid positions. 
then people go, well, I just need to get more mechanical. No, you don't. Don't be a plonker. You need to get more positional. And then it becomes easier. And that's the whole point of positioning. So this ball's coming high. Right, we're just going to go up and just save it. Oh, that's the same one. So you can save this in a variety of ways. And these balls are fast. Okay, so you're going to have to double jump. Okay, so for those ones, you have to double jump. You can double jump for that one. Why? Because you've got the right momentum. But what happens if you don't double jump? So you come here. Yeah, you can jump into it like that as well. And that depends on what you're trying to achieve. For example, if um, I've got a guy who's, let's say he is, on a shot like this, he's flying behind it. Let's just say he's air dribbling it. He's going for the dunk. I'm more likely to try and flip into this ball. So I see him coming in and I'm going to try and crunch it to get some sort of pinch in the open space. If I double jump it, he might be able to push it through me a bit easier. So I personally prefer trying to really smush that ball and create a, an awkward pinch. Now you'll notice, what, what have I done with this car here? What have I done? What, what do you do? Well, what's different to what most people see when they're playing defense? What, what's different about this? I'm putting you in the net. I'm, I'm gravitating you towards naturally wanting to go inside the net. And that's very important. This is the whole principle of defending. Most people do this, right? They go for the ball. You are safe in the net. If I go inside the net, look how safe I am. Look, I mean, fully inside the net. I can still make the save. You can watch this in slow motion. Okay, most people don't go in the net. Go in the net. So I always say to defend deep because look, I'm all. Look how easy it is to make saves. People think you're a god when you start doing that. It's the only way you can save it though. So do that. Anyway, once you've done those, when you get halfway through to the 25th one, you'll notice we're in the deep position. Wow, that's interesting. Why not a shallow position? Because I want to save the ball. Now, if you're in a shallow position where most people rotate their here, you're just going to help that in. So many people will just help that in. So here, we can just look how easy it is. And these are the same shots, believe it or not. They're actually the same shots. And what you'll notice is it's much easier to get the saves. And in fact, what else do you get? Oh, I've got all this vision, Dave. Yeah, exactly. So imagine this. They've shot the ball. You can see where they are. And boom, now that is a goal for you. Just because you waited in an intelligent spot. That's how easy it is. If you just do that for most of the, again, <laughs> champ, grand champ, champ two and under. I'd even go as far. Champ three and under. You're going to fly up the ranks. And then we have the last day, which is the shadow day. One of the most important days there is. So all I want you to do is, it's going to be a bit interesting, this is. You're going to go into a casual game. And it's got to be a 1v1. Casual 1v1. We're going to do five minutes. And you can do this how you want. Okay, basically it's a game of shadowing on the inside. Staying close to the plate and preventing this guy getting the ball across. Now, hopefully while I do this for the next couple of minutes... I'm going to explain how you do it. Okay, so we finally got a game here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to try and stay close, but we're also going to try and prevent them getting any sort of lift on the ball. All right, so we just do the basic kickoff because that's what most people will be doing, just a very basic kickoff. And when we get the, the ball, we're just going to put it into their corner. We're going to put it into their corner and we're going to let them take it. And then I move into this inside position. Notice I'm inside the ball. Perfect. Inside the ball. And I just stay close. And I'm always on the inside. Always on the inside. Ready to move towards the net. Inside. Inside. Now, he thinks this is a real game. But really, this is training. So I'm inside. I'm moving towards the net. And I want you to watch. I want you to watch as this happens. You know, just watch the game. Okay, cool. We'll take it this way then. And we just we just clear it away whenever you get the opportunity. Okay, we'll go inside real quick. Practice, we can practice again. Inside, we just... Shadow. And then kill the ball. Always kill the ball in front of your net. Don't try carrying it out of the net. You're not going to succeed. Because if they dive on it, and then sometimes, guys, just come into this position that we just went in. Like, that's a good way of doing it. We'll just fake it. And watch it all. It'll go, yeah, again. And so we come right here. And then we're going to jab the ball so we get more space. We can work on it. And then straight away, I'm just going to fake him. I'm going to go inside. And look what happens. He drives the ball into me. But I'm not doing anything, am I? I'm literally just sitting in this position. And again, watch this. Punk. Wow, it's like it's a hack for defending. Yeah, that's because no one works on it. Where's he going to come from? Single jump. Okay. Always watch the opponent and go opposite to him. This is all the drills you need. So look, let's get inside. Now, I can go super close here. Now, let's look at this ball. And we're going to talk about this. That ball. Okay, single jump. Move to it. Again, we're blocking it. Now, that ball was important. The reason that was important because that was bouncing. And I wanted to explain it before I actually do it. What you need to do when the ball's bouncing like that. And we're going to play that back into the corner just to make it seem real for him, like we're trying to do something. Is we got to stop the bounce. Because if we hit, if we don't stop the bounce and we just try and stay close, he just hits it over us. Let's say this ball's bouncing, we're just going to flip into it. 
And then there's open net, for example. Okay, we come here. I don't even mean to... I'm not even trying to do this. Come on, mate. So here we go. Nice and inside. Okay, he's going to the wall. Well, where's the danger here if he's up the wall? The only danger is towards the net. Is it in? Yeah. Well played. <laughs> so obviously, you'd put a bit more pace on that and not do a musty flip. But he's looking to go towards the net. So I don't follow him to the wall. So well played to him. We give him a nice shot. But that's all you got to do. So just play the ball to the corner. Grab the boost. And I do want to just show you before I switch to the next one. We'll use the same guy. Okay, so he's getting a bouncing ball. Okay, now look at the problems it causes him. So we already know what he wants to do. So we're going to grab that. Okay, so this time I'm going to move properly how you would. And I'd probably, in this situation, I'd take time to just do that. Okay, he's looking for a little bit of free stylage. No problem. And again, back towards the net. Don't, don't bother fighting this. Well, I'm hoping to get a bouncing ball here. He does seem to be... Uh, like he wants to do a, a, again look at this defensive position fine you know there's an open net we'll smack it back into his corner but i'm going to try and get a ball bouncing here so there we go that should do now when this ball's bouncing i've got to do this here we go we get him a bouncing ball he's determined to go to the wall basically what you would do is you'd side flip into that so now i'm going to show you the outside shadow which is really good against a quicker player who is going for more aerial shots you can do an outside shadow the reason the outside can be better against the people in this situation we'll give them the ball back is because you can take the momentum across. Now, if they're going slower, what happens is it's a bit too slow for you to put across. You might kill it in front of the net. So we're going to go outside. We're going to read where he's going. He's coming back to this side. So we're going to go outside here. And that's why. Okay, so you can stop people who are trying to get up the walls. And then you can come back inside. Single jump because he's got a, a bit of explosivity. Single jump. Okay. And that's how you adapt between the different players. We've got to move back there. Okay, look. I mean, if you could see how many times we've got the ball here. All right. And look, we go back here. We're just confusing him. So he tries to, he doesn't know what to do. He's going to score an own goal. He's absolutely perplexed. He says, oh, I've never experienced any defending like that before in my life. He's dropped wow three times. That's how easy the game is, guys. And that's how everyone misses out. Because this guy, let's say for his rank, he's nine out of 10 on offense. He's one out of 10 on defense. Yeah, the difference is, let's say for my rank, I'm eight out of 10 on offense and eight out of 10 on defense. You know what I mean? Maybe lower than that. So again, you know, what we'll do is we'll just go for a low 50 here just to mess him up. And that's that's how you play the game, guys. You don't have to do anything special. People would flick that. Why am I going to flick two centimeters away from his net? I'll go for mind games. Now he's tilted. Look, I dropped the ball. No can defend. Why? Because I haven't done the lockdown program. That's correct. Right answer. Okay, it's four weeks to change your life, guys. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll end this game here. Uh, we, we'll give him the win. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully those explanations help. Um, you, There is also an optional drill, but you need a partner to do it. You basically both stay grounded. You can try and get round each other. But that's all you got to do, guys. Okay? And you will be very dominant in your games. Any questions, drop it in the comments below. You can download the... I'll put the link where you can download the PDF. It's in the Discord. As I will also put the Excel spreadsheet for people who want to follow this along and really level up their defensive ability. Thank you very much for watching. Look after yourself and peace out. Peace, peace, peace.